So uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Arda Walter. I'm the portfolio holder for the environment uh, at West Berkshire Council. As uh, many of uh, us will be aware, the, the council declared a climate emergency um, in 2019, and we've set ourselves and the district by implication some very ambitious targets to decarbonize the council's own operations and to encourage and help and assist the district as a whole to become as uh, carbon neutral as possible um, over the coming firstly 10 years and then beyond that. And we've talked a lot about both what the council is doing and what we would like to see individuals and groups around the district uh, to do to help with this very big endeavour. Um, one important community though that, that I'm delighted we're able now to, to turn to is the business community within uh, West Berkshire, because while there are things that the council can do, and there are many things that residents can do, there is a lot that the business community um, itself is best placed and sometimes the only um, function of society that can do to make changes. So I'm delighted uh, that we are uh, joined this evening by three very different businesses, all based within West Berkshire, who have both embraced uh, the challenge of climate change, and um, the need to go green and are using uh, these challenges and these changes for their own uh, benefit to grow and also to help wider society. So what I'm looking forward to tonight is hearing um, from uh, three businesses. Uh, firstly, Clementine from uh, Cotswold Fair, um, followed by Tom from uh, Thatcher and Refillable and Rosie of the Sheep Drove Organic Farm, who are going to tell uh, us in their own way uh, what they've been doing and what they're looking forward to do. And followed by an introduction from each of these businesses, uh, we'll have a, a question and answer session um, and we look forward to hearing your questions. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Clementine as our first speaker. Thank you, Clementine. Thank you, and uh, thanks for inviting me to, to this panel. It, it's really nice to be here. Um, so I'm the impact manager for Cotswold Fair. Um, and we, yes, despite the name, we, we are in, in West Berkshire. So we are um, in Thiel, just uh, just on the high street above Mercy in Action, the charity shop, if, if any of you know. And um, what we do, so we are a wholesaler of fine and specialty food products. We've got about 400 suppliers, including many well-known brands, and we, we sell our products to about 4,000 customers across the UK, and we've got one internationally as well. And our customers are in majority independent retail businesses, so your garden, garden centers, farm shops, um, delis, but we've got some large retailers as well. And we're also a certified B Corporation, so if people don't know what that is, um, I think it's gained a lot of momentum in, in the past few years, but it's a certification that evaluates the sustainable impact of a company on five impact areas. So you've got workers, communities, environment, governance, and customers. And what's interesting about it, it's currently the fastest growing sustainable business community in the world. And the, the area where it's growing the most at the moment is the United Kingdom. So it's, there's a lot of movement happening there. And just to give you an example, two years ago, we've, we had about six B Corp suppliers. Last year, we had something like 20, and now we've got 42, and the year isn't even over. So that's really grown, and we've not really changed our number of suppliers. So really a lot of growth in, in the B Corp community. And um, in terms of what we do as, as a business, I, I kind of wanted to share the journey and what it's been like for us rather than give tips and you know ideas because I, I guess that will really depend on on businesses but initially we we started as a I, I think you could say normal business at the time we we were the first um, wholesaler of, of fine and specialty food products so you could say business was was good we were fulfilling a need that you know not a lot of other people were doing but um over time, our, our CEO, Paul Hargreaves, he kind of got to realize that business could and should actually be part of the solution to, you know, the, the inequalities and, and environmental problems that we've seen for, for decades. He comes from the charity sector himself, so I think it, it wasn't, you know, a realization, but the, the, the moment that really brought that for him, 
he went on a trip to, to Kenya with his children and he visited an orphanage in 2010. That's the photo you can see where 70% of the kids there had lost their parents to the AIDS epidemic. And he was really touched by, by what he saw there and decided to use Cotswold Fair, the company, as a source of support for them. So the intention was, we're not just a business that makes profit, we are also a business that gives back. Um, and that's the, the cause that was really, really close to his heart. And they are still today our charity partner. We've, I think over the years, we have raised something like um, 100,000 pounds for them, um, probably more actually, and we've donated too. So yeah, really, really great uh, results. And um, around the same time, so the Beef Corp movement was starting to grow. And it's something that really resonated with that idea of using business as a force for good. So we became one of the first companies in the UK to certify in 2015, and we have been certified ever since. And I think the first impression at the time was that it's when you look at the B impact assessment, it's actually really challenging to be a sustainable business. So that's kind of how they felt at the time. They thought they were doing really good, but um, when you see kind of what it takes, it's, it's, it can get really, really tricky. So for, for reference, you need 80 points out of 200 to certify. And the median in the UK, um, I've seen different numbers, but it goes from 40 to 55. So it, yeah, there's a lot of work, I think, from, from the business community to do better. But we've recertified um, twice and we increased our score each time. So I think it, it's definitely possible to, to yeah, be a better business. Um, and that's, that's not what we're doing um, in, on top of Big Corp. We, last year, we adopted our first impact strategy. Um, and actually, the company decided to hire someone permanently to also cover that. So that's, that's why I'm here. There was someone else um, in, in the role as well before me. Um, and we found six areas that we felt are particularly important for us to do better on based on you know, what we do as a company. And carbon is obviously one of them, just, just like the, the council, we declared a, a climate energy emergency in 2019. And we also became at this time the first wholesaler, I think, to be carbon neutral. So yeah, that's something we're very proud of. And we were doing this through um, offsetting with a, a verified offset partner. It's, you know, it's probably not a perfect solution and it, it shouldn't be the only thing companies do on carbon. But for us, it really pushed us to collect more accurate data, which can be hard for a small business, understand where our impact is, and also build a plan to reduce our emissions at source rather than, you know, just neutralize by buying offset credits every year. So we have a plan for that. Um, a plan to 2030. First, we want to be net zero by 2030, but also reduce our emissions at source by 5% every year. And after that, we also want to continue reducing our emissions to uh, align with what climate scientists are saying we need to do to avoid a 1.5 degree raise in global temperatures. So it's going to be very hard, I think, because we are a growing business and you know, as you grow, you kind of emit more and we are a business that relies on putting trucks on the road. So that's a lot of carbon. Um, but for the short term, our plan is to decouple our growth from our emissions. So to make sure that every time we make a million in revenue, um, that million has a lesser and lesser carbon impact. There are ways we can do that. It's it's going to require a lot of things, but for example, we encourage our customers to order in bigger quantities less often from us. We also started trialing something called backhauling, which is to prevent having empty trucks doing journeys on the road. So if we did a delivery with the customer and we know that there's a supplier not far, we actually use the, the journey to get products from them and bring them back to the warehouse and that saves the journey. Um, so we're trying to see how that could work. And the big thing I think that is going to take more time is electrifying our fleets. Um, it's something that we started at our level with our company cars. So all of them now, as of last year, they are electric or hybrid vehicles. And we're working with our logistic partner on um, yeah, electrifying their own fleet, which is going to take a lot more time. I think we don't think the range is really there at the moment. But as soon as it is, we'll definitely 
beyond it. And we, we are actually going to start with some short journeys to London with some electric vans to see how that works. So that should be done end of this year, next year. And yeah, we're very excited to excited to see where that's where that goes. Um, so that's just yeah, very surface level of what we do on carbon. Um, but you know, hopefully it's it's a good start. We also signed up with the SME Climate Hub to make our plan and our commitment public and keep ourselves accountable to to what we do. Um, so that you know, if there's a solution that we had in mind that turns out doesn't work, we don't just give up. We keep going because it's. It, it is really important for businesses to to do that. Um, and this is a page from our impact reports. We publish one every year. Um, and again, it's a good time to reflect on what we've done in the past year, to kind of see what we've done and where we want to go next. And over the years, we've been able to see how some of these numbers have progressed, which has been great. So um, there are many more things that I think businesses can do to be green that are maybe not as talked about as carbon. For example, we volunteer and it's important to us. Last year, we started that by giving our employees 12 hours to volunteer over the year. And it was kind of funnily received initially, but you know, actually they really enjoyed it. And so this year we're doing 16 hours and many of them have actually volunteered locally. So uh, we've developed a really cool partnership with the car shed in Reading. If, if you've heard of, of them, they do fantastic work. Um, and we also donate to charities. So like I said, we work with the Ballast Children's Center in Kenya, but we also have a target to donate 9% of our revenue to charities this year. Last year it was 8% and next year it will be 10. And the intention is to increase it a little bit um, over the next few years as well. The idea is that as we grow, we want to continue giving back and, you know, just kind of tie the amounts we donate to how much we grow. So it's it's how we were doing this. And, and in the past year, we've yeah we've donated, I think, the, the most we ever have. So that was that was fantastic. Um, and as a food business, obviously, food waste is is important to to us as well to to avoid. It has a very big climate impact as well. Um, so we do our best to, to avoid food waste and, you know, stock management, unfortunately, it's, it's not always an exact science. Um, and there have been supply chain issues in, in the past year as well. But we are very happy to say that we make sure every food that was produced as food will be consumed as food. So we donate it to City Harvest in London, um, who then re redistributes that surplus to people in need. So, yeah again, really great impact. And that, that also prevents um, the carbon impact from, from food waste, whereas before we, we had to kind of send it to biofuels, which is okay, but you know, it's always better if, if there can be a good outlet for, for surplus. Um, and yeah, that, so that was the past year and we keep going as much as possible. So on the next slide, that's basically a list of our plans for, for the next year, for actually for the year we are in now. Some of those we haven't started, some are ongoing, some we've already done. Um, the one that you see in green, it's another business that we have in the Bristol area. It's um, a food retail, an independent retailer, and also a, a restaurant. Um, and they were set up as a sustainable business. So we kind of started from scratch as, as Copsul Fair, but actually we've been able to use all this good knowledge to start a completely different business um, in a very different area, but you know, with kind of the things we've learned and it's gone amazingly well for them. So yeah, I'm, I'm working with them on, on some projects like B Corp certification as well or carbon assessments, but it's, it's a really, really interesting business there as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess my conclusion is it kind of, it doesn't really matter where you are now or how much you've started, but, you know, set a purpose and set an intention for your company and with the right purpose and the right plan, I think it's all companies can really do more for, for people and planets. So yeah, that's, um, that's my presentation and I'll, I'll let the others speak now but if anyone i mean i know we'll have a q a but if anyone wants to contact me as well that was my my email on the slide so 
It's excellent. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Clementine. Uh, it's hugely impressive of some of the things you said there. But uh, and again, I, I look forward to some questions coming back to you. Um, so um, our, our next speaker is uh, Rosie Kindersley from the Sheep Drove Organic Farm. And again, as I said, sort of quite a different business, but uh, maybe there are some similarities and overlaps. But anyway, I look forward to hearing from you, Rosie. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Um, uh, so I'm uh, from Sheep Drove, and that is primarily a organic uh, mixed farm. Uh, so that means livestock and arable uh, certified by the Soil Association. So that's our primary business. But <laughs> we like many farms today, we are also a heavily diversified business. Um, we have uh, an event space which hosts weddings, funerals, corporate events, parties, all that kind of thing. We also have um, office and workshop and storage space in uh, redundant um, uh, farm buildings because the, the farm, the previous farm wasn't an organic farm. And so there was lots of um, uh, housing, which we, which we is not compliant with organic uh, livestock raising. We also have a couple of farm stays. We have a natural burial ground, which I'd love to talk a bit more about, but I'm not sure this is quite the right uh, forum, but that's a passion of ours. Uh, we, and then of course we have um, uh, renewable energy generation on site. And we have various uh, nature conservation projects, including a rewilding site. Um, so I, I can't, I, I, I'm not going to talk so much about the farm, even though that's our primary business, uh, because I'm not sure how relevant it is. But I, I will say just uh, one thing um, uh, is um, the, the core idea behind the farm is that it's circular agriculture. So what does that mean? That means that all the nutrients, so like straw and animal manure, remain on the farm. They're not sold off the farm. And no chemical pesticides or artificial fertilizers are brought onto the farm. So it's as closed a system as we could get as a, as a farming equivalent to a, a cir the circular economy as possible. Now, our events and office spaces are housed in what's known as a green building. Um, and I'm sure you realize that the whole sustainability and environmental uh, movement is just full of jargon and, uh, you know, a wash with jargon and also greenwashing. But essentially, a green building, this, this sort of, there are five key ideas behind it. One is sustainable building materials. Um, so, uh, so it's mainly built with FSC uh, wood. Uh, we reuse the old building rubble. We built on the footprint of a former building. We reuse that in the foundations. We used other excavated materials to build the building as well. We have round chalked walls uh, and um, we use recycled materials as much as possible in the building. I mean, so particularly the washrooms, there are there, there were uh, walls, all sorts of mad things made of toothpaste tubes or chairs are made of recycled plastic. Um, so when you start looking, there are lots of options. Obviously, this is only relevant to people who are thinking about, about building. Um, the second one is energy efficiency, unsurprisingly. Uh, there's lots of natural light. We also have LED lighting throughout, but the main idea is not to turn on the light. Um, there's double glazing and high levels of insulation to keep the heat in when it's cold outside and blinds and natural ventilation, so not air conditioning, natural ventilation, non-mechanised, uh, so to keep it cool when it's hot outside. Um, we also, um, the, the third uh, key idea is uh, renew renewable energy generation. So the building is heated by a ground source heat pump. Um, and we have a solar thermal panel just for the hot water in the commercial kitchen. Um, we also, because we're a farm, so this isn't really doable for everybody at the moment, have uh, two wind turbines and lots of solar because we've got lots of barn roofs. Um, but we are, our energy supply is also and always has been 100% renewables so uh, no energy is used for non-renewable uh, sources um, 
Uh, water efficiency is of the fourth key thing, and we have a grey water recycling system, so all our wastewater is cleaned through a constructed wet, uh, wetland um, and then returned clean to the aquifer. And then the fifth thing is about um, quality of life and, and well-being. Um, this really comes from sick building syndrome. The idea is that a green building must be a healthy place to work. Um, so, and, and that's very much, obviously we think it's got beautiful spaces, but, uh, uh, but actually that's a lot to do with natural light and natural ventilation. And I think, you know, recently, um, the recent pandemic has very much shown how that's a key element to new building, which hasn't been, which has been lost since Victorian times. We are all, so we are also apparently <laughs> an operationally net zero building. Now, what does that mean? So that means that the same amount of energy taken from the grid is returned to the grid from the energy produced on site. Um, uh, we're also supposed to be, you know, apparently carbon neutral, which is defined as reduced energy consumption, plus uh, the use of low carbon emission energy through on-site generation and no energy use for non-renewable sources. Uh, so this all means that our tenants, uh, office tenants, business tenants, event guests have access to space that is net zero and carbon neutral. And many people choose to rent and hire here directly for that reason. So, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're you know, we're, 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 we're very green minded, always have been uh, as uh, and but. Uh, but also it um, means um, that there is actually something in it for us. They're, these are paying guests and they're, the funds we receive for them directly fund more uh, climate positive actions. So uh, that, um, which in the form of more renewables and more nature conservation. So we've got a leaky barn, uh, another leaky barn roof, which we're going to put uh, which are going to have more solar panels and, and the nature conservation is obviously ongoing. We're uh, restoring another area of um, uh, to, to uh, chalk downland, which happens to be the rarest habitat in the whole of Europe. Um, so, um, uh, you know, uh, um, so how is, is any of this relevant to any or, or anybody here? Um, well, um, until now, changing to 100% renewables energy provider would have been a simple swap. Unfortunately, it's become a lot more complicated in the current climate. Uh, but uh, that would be something that hopefully, uh, you know, it should be at the, the top of everyone's list. So structurally, we are pretty sustainable, um, but uh, we also need to make sure that we're we're sustainable in our day-to-day -day operations, and that is always work in progress. Um, we found that uh, work, writing up a, a green policy is a very helpful thing to do. Uh, we're not a very big business, um, but it, it's still really, uh, in terms of personnel, but it's still really worth doing if you haven't done it. And I was trying to remember, and I think the, the template we used when we started was one by from Haringey Council, which is a bar in London, but it's just a very clear, uh, a clear little list and also moves you towards targets, setting targets, which, um, you know, a lot of people, businesses just throw up green or environmental policies uh, and then seem to leave it at that. Um, anyway, obviously the application of the green policy and the target and the target set will vary enormously from business to business. But I think there are a couple of things that are universal, and the biggest one is waste. And obviously avoidance, minimising <laughs> waste creation is the best thing. Um, and but recycling is very important. Um, so we use a registered and licensed waste removal surface, which enables us to recycle nearly everything um the um uh, so including food waste uh, which means we have separate label bins for everything in in all the kitchens that might be the big commercial kitchen but also the farm stays the the office the staff kitchens and it is and, and also information 
of you know why we're doing this and it's it, it's amazingly good for focusing the mind I don't know if any of you um took part in the big plastic count this summer but these just doing these things a bit like doing the B Corp uh, uh it, these are very very helpful things because they uh throw everything into um relief the other thing is having a water filter. We've always had a water filter on site and because we're in event spaces, we also have a choice of sparkling and still. And we've always offered free drinking water in glass bottles. And I can't, I mean, the, the amount of plastic, I hope that I've saved over the years and, and just getting people, you know, not to bring bottled water on site as the, you know, the entire cycle of bottled water is incredibly wasteful. Um, then the other thing I think is, you know, they're quite simple things like LED lights and getting people to turn the light off. People are generally very good with photocopies and computers and things, but the lights, um, and you can have little rules like um, not before four, you know, try and communicate it in a fun way. Um, you, know, you know, joining the dark side and all that. Um, another thing is to only use eco-friendly cleaning products. So we have to do that because of the green site, the green, uh, because of our reped system. Um, but this is again to help keep pollution down and buy in bulk or opt for refills. Um, and then the last thing is really about communication and community and uh, local. It's how does one communicate and interact with one's co-workers and clients and, and one's suppliers about why one's doing what one's doing. And, um, and, and also about that constant thing of reviewing, trying to keep one's supply chain as local as possible, which is you know, it's difficult to keep on top of that. Uh, and the other thing is it's really helpful to connect with the community of people who do what you do. Um, and have similar goals to what, uh, what you do so you can share experiences and learn from each other. Uh, I mean, our most challenging area is obviously events. It's one thing to have a sustainable a venue. It's something quite different to host a sustainable event. Um, we're members of the Sustainable Wedding Alliance, and that's been really a great experience, actually, being within a community of people who are trying to do better and trying to work out how they can um, you know come up with simple swaps for their clients uh, and and you know exchange uh, their different experiences. Um, so um, uh, how, how much time have I got? I mean, I could talk a bit more about 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 events. Uh, I suppose. I mean, in events, we just we try and persuade people to do just a few simple things. One is flowers. Uh, there are enormous, enormous challenges for, um, you know, for the cut flower industry. Uh, it just, it's just vast. And the best thing you can do, I don't know whether any of you have flowers in your reception area or offer flowers. The best thing to do is to choose British grown, not flown and seasonal or, you know, in the reception area to have potted or growing plants rather than single use. Um, in events, plastic is always a tremendous problem, um, you know, so one's always trying to push people to hire uh, decor or, or, um, or, or, or offer edible favours and gifts and get them to focus on the experience and people, not just more stuff. Um, then, um, and of course, the biggest, uh, and then food it's catering, it's really about finding a community of local suppliers uh, who, um, who buy local and have similar uh, standards to one. Um, then, um, so why, why, you know, why uh, do all this? Um, I suppose it's really obvious that as farmers, uh, nature is our business. But we would go further, uh, further to say that our business, actually all our, the whole business depends on nature. People visit, uh, guests come here uh, because of the beautiful natural world and the way we look after it and because of our, um, you know, all our, our green initiatives. And actually, we want people to come here <laughs> to see the green initiatives and to see the, the beautiful natural world and um, benefit uh, uh, from it. I mean, there are, you know, supposedly three pillars of sustainability and one talks, everyone knows about the environmental side, but people don't always talk about the social and economic uh, side. 
And um, so uh, what, what has just, just been talked about, um, you know, you know, investing in, in reinvesting in the business, in co in, in one's co-workers, um, um, trying to connect with the local community through uh, charitable giving and volunteering. Um, all, all these things are very important. And, uh, you know, a, a, a key element to sustainability and just, you know, I, I very much believe, we very much believe that if, if keeping local it is, you know, you, you put in, you, you get back, you, you benefit. Uh, from was, from this from from that that's a core idea in the, in the for sustainability. That was excellent. Thank you so much, Rosie. Those those huge amounts you've uh, given us for thought there. I mean, it's a, a vast, impressive the the list of things you've been talking through. And, and again, I, I can see already there will be some of the questions. Um, I, I look forward to directing towards you. Um, so. Um, Last but not least, um, we have um, got yet another different business um, who will be spoken to uh, largely by Tom of Thatcham Refillable. Um, Tom will be supervised, so understand it, by Jenny, um, who is, of course, really in charge of this all. But anyway, I, over to you, Tom and Jenny, uh, for the third of our um, business presentations. Thank you very much, Steve. Yes, it's very much Jenny's thing, but um, I, I'm the one with the mouth, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> But uh, yes, well, we, we run Thatch and Refillable and we supply um, refillable cleaning and body care products. So uh, um, household cleaning, commercial cleaning, hair care, body care, you know, um, and things like that. And plastic free household products, recycled toilet paper, things like that. Um, um, we what we have done um, to help us, we've sourced and promoted our, the products that we think are the best and that they're as local as possible they're circular economy so the containers that we get are sent back they get refilled and then sent back out to us lots of refill places only recycle containers and one that i won't mention takes them back and throws them away so just the fact of pouring it from one container to another doesn't necessarily make it good um, some of our uh, plastic free products, the the um, the companies we've chosen, the manufacturers, they plant trees for however many are, are sold. Um, they use reusable energy and that. So we've tried to um, responsibly source what ones we use. Uh, we changed our website host to one that is um, carbon negative and it's actually by 300 um, percent. They invest in um, um renewable schemes, they use renewable energy and environmental schemes, and it offsets some of our, um, some of our sort of um, emissions. Um, we used to, um, or we still do, we deliver all across West Berkshire. Well, I used to deliver every week. Now I still deliver within seven miles every week, but we've cut down going further afield to only once a month because Going to the same places or, or past the same places every week is obviously not, not um, you know, not very good and not good for the emissions. So the um, towards the end of last year, we also bought a trailer which I've kitted out as a mobile shop. And the mobile shop, we go to those places uh, once a month. Like Wednesday, we're in Purley on Thames. Um, Friday, we're at Thatcher Market, which obviously I know is, is closer for us. But we go to to like Purley once a month, and then everyone can come to us, uh, rather than us driving around and delivering to several different places. And then the following week, somebody from the same road you've just been to phones up and goes, "Can you deliver to me too?" Which um, is obviously not good for the emissions. When we do do the, do our deliveries, we um, ask people to buy in bulk. We encourage them to club together as well. So people, we have. Um, customers that have WhatsApp groups in the same village. So when one of them is ordering, they tell everyone else um, and they know that is the only time we're coming that month. So everyone else orders on top of that. Again, just to try and keep the, the transport and the driving around to, to a minimum. Um, we also encourage people to come and collect from us. Um, with the, the uh, mobile shop, um, 
I'm in the process of fitting solar panels to it and making it completely self-sufficient. So all the lighting and, and um, um, the water for washing out any containers and things is all there. And it, you know, um, at the moment we've been, in the winter, we've been plugging it in to get lighting when it's dark. So it's, it will stop us doing that. Um, yeah, so it's just for us, it's just about changing the, the things we do slightly to, to do as little as possible, um, which sounds lazy, but it's meant to, to you know, we'll do as much with as little as possible, if that, if that makes more sort of sense. We do also now have funding for a cargo bike um, that we will be purchasing um, in the future soon. Um, I actually haven't purchased it yet because um, our garage was leaking. So I didn't want to put an expensive bike in a garage with a roof that leaked, but I've now done the garage. So we can do that. And the idea with the bike is we can deliver round Thatcham, um, obviously, because it's near us on the bike. But also I can put it in the back of our van. And when we go to, say, Burfield Common or we're at the Watermill Theatre tomorrow in their car park um, with, with the mobile shop, I can jump on the bike while Jenny's in the shop and go around and do any deliveries within a couple mile radius or however far. So again, just trying to, to cover as much area um, with as little driving and as little um, diesel consumption. So yeah, we, we um, all our products um, are vegan. They're British made. Um, and they have as low a carbon footprint as possible. Our, our core products come from a company called Sessi, which are based in Oxford. They are all made um, within, I think it's about a 30 mile radius of Oxford. Um, so Oxfordshire and just a little bit to Northamptonshire, I think. And they, they come to us. We try to order in bulk um, as well. So obviously we have less deliveries. Um, uh, our other products, our plastic free products, they come from Yorkshire. So um, that's the, the, the two main places we get things from. We don't buy from overseas. We, we um, with SESI as well, they try to source as many ingredients from the UK and they're already always changing formulas when they find something that works. They're always fiddling around um, and changing things to keep it as um, um, UK based as possible. Um, so the system, um, the circular economy system is properly zero waste. Um, the containers that they have it in get cleaned out and refilled. The containers that come to us get out and get refilled. And we clean out customers' containers um, and refill them. So the way we do it, you can order our containers, as, as, as we call them, um, which are new on first purchase, but then I swap them on the doorstep like a milkman. So you don't have to be in, and we just swap empties for full, clean them out and refill them. Um, or you can bring your bottles to us. So random bottles of, of any, any make. Um, the advantage of that for people as well is it keeps it affordable because you can buy what you need. You don't have to buy a big container necessarily. You know, we, we do as little as 100 mils up to 20 litres. So depending on how much you want to try, you want to try a sample, you have people on their own. We have one lady who comes to us once every 18 months. She buys five litres of each product and then, you know, see her again. But obviously she could come and buy 100 mils and come and see us once every couple of weeks or something or whatever would work. So we are saving or trying to save the plastic going into the landfill. It's the, that was our main focus was the plastic. Um, we also stock the SESI Pro range, which is for hospitality, catering, care and commercial um, places they meet all the industry standards and they believe it's the first truly zero waste commercial range because again lots are refillable but all they do is send out five litre containers that people pour out and then throw away or recycle um, so we, we've actually we're doing a delivery tomorrow um, to um, the watermill theatre who are trying nine products off us for the first time um, Thatcham Town Council, all the halls and the public toilets and things like that in Thatcham are cleaned with our products that they buy. We have a few pubs that buy a surface spray off us and a um, few other um, places and shops and things that buy the odd product off us. So we're trying to, that's the area we're trying to grow to, to bring it to more people. Um, 
Jenny is also a founder member of the West Berkshire Sustainable Community, with which they're trying to get plastic free status for Thatcher and Newbury, which is with Surfers Against Sewage, and it's about cutting out um, single use plastic. Uh, we are bronze and silver um, accreditation holders and we're working towards our gold with it. But with the sustainable community, Jenny is bringing it to a wider um, community and has signed up, um, I think, over 50 businesses um, for, but for both because Thatcher and Manubi have to be treated separately, but they're doing it um, as one. So we're trying to sort of spread the word to everybody and um, get people to use as little as they can um, and, and only buy what they need, basically. So we don't need to, it's the excess in this world that is that for me is the biggest problem. Um, oh, I know my children know it very well. Um, but so, yeah, so that's us really. We're, um, yeah, we, we, um, we deliver every week. I say our mobile shop this month, we're in 13 different locations um, with it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can come to us, you can do that. But yeah, we're just trying everything we can to um, travel as little as possible. But when we do travel, um, for want of a better word for delivering, have a full van to make it worth going um, and also to, to spread the impact um, as much as possible. Um, yeah, so that's about everything with us, I think. So I think that's it, Steve. Excellent. Excellent. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. And, and again, in, in, in your different dimension, that was really inspirational and, and really interesting. Um, just picking up one little thing on you, you mentioned about e-cargo bikes, and that's something we council are very keen to support more businesses with a with a maybe probably more an urban uh, focus to take up. Um, so it's great that you're already on the case and doing it. And um, again, I, I really do think there's a it's got to be a great thing for businesses operating in in town centres um so um once again thank you thank you everybody um now for the moving on to the second part of of, of this evening session uh, we've had uh, several questions from um from, from people and um so i'll i'll, I'll farm those out in a, in a fairly uh, cruel way uh, no i won't really um so the first one is uh, for clementine um, I, I don't know if you've seen the question, Clementine, in the chat, but basically it's uh, it's it's uh, it's from um, I think it's NCRC. Are you looking to form more partnerships within the local districts with local charities who receive and distribute food surpluses? Um, so thanks for thanks for that question. Our we. We outsource our warehouse operations and they are not in West Berkshire. So we've got our ambient product warehouses in Ivor in Greater London. And then for Chilled, it's in Leicestershire. We've recently moved there. And so it, it would be a bit tricky, I think, to, um, to divert our surplus to West Berkshire. But, you know, well, let's have a chat and, and see if we can do something. We received a lot of samples uh, from suppliers to our office in, in Thiel. And um, what we've done with them is people either take them home to, to try by themselves and give feedback to the buyers. Um, and we also donate um, to the Newbury Food Bank that works with the Trussell Trust. So they've got a, a collection point at the, the church local to us. So yeah, we I think every last Wednesday of the month, we just give them a box of all the samples that we have. We just clear out everything and and donate to them so you know i can't promise anything i think we're already doing a lot but like i said I'm, I'm very happy to to pick up the conversation and if we can't support with that maybe there's other things we can do um i don't know volunteering or, or donations or or other things in general so yeah very very happy to pick up the conversation if, if someone wants to contact me Excellent. Uh, thank you thank you Clementine. um so we'll we'll happily share contact. We'll trusting the speakers are happy to. We, we will um, share contact details after this. And I, I know you, Clementine, put your uh, your email address up. But we'll we'll make sure if uh, that those are shared uh, because there, I'm, I'm sure there will be follow up questions for, for all three of the uh, the business presenters. Um, so moving on, then we, we we now have a question. Um, actually, initially comes to the the council, but then then bounces on to uh, Sheep of Organic Farm, and and somebody's asked. Um, uh, sorry, let me see. It's, it's Alice, Alice Beard. Um, some years ago, sheep drove applied for singular wind turbines on their farmland to be even lower in carbon. 
West Berkshire turned it down. Any comments? So um, from the council, I, I can't, uh, I'm afraid, comment on planning matters. They're, they're, they're um, semi-judicial and, and, uh, and, and hugely controversial often. I am keenly aware, though, in, in general, that both wind turbines and solar panels, while they're environmentally very good, uh, they, of course, uh, they're, they're fairly tricky. There are always impacts to these things. Um, so, yes, I'm sorry, I can't talk about this instance in particular. However, uh, Rosie, I'd be very interested in your take on, and, and uh, you, you may well have said this, if so apologies, but in terms of the amount of energy that you need, if, if you had infinite opportunity to invest more in wind turbines, would you want more? Do you have enough with the arrangements you have? Or what's your steer overall at the minute? Well, I mean, our ideal is to go completely off grid. Mm -hmm. So to do that, um, because of where we are geographically, it would always be wind turbines. Now, and, but we need, but, and apparently there are going to be wind turbines, which are smaller, building mounted, this constant innovation. As they stand at the moment, we, Probably we are also we're not we we are in an area of outstanding natural beauty, so we have we have to take that into into contact context as well. So that always has to be considered. I mean, where they are, I think where they the two we have where we're sighted, there then you can't see them from the horizon. They uh, they don't blight the landscape, and there and one of them is really quite small. I mean, I think they're both quite small by by standards of the wind farms one sees. Uh, mm -hmm. And lots of the countries, so they are small, um, but we're really wait, when, when one's hoping for innovation. We also to go off grid, we need batteries to really get going. I mean, I just to give you some history. We, uh, my family, when we came here in the early seventies. Uh, and, and lived in a caravan outside the farmhouse because the farmhouse had a tree growing through it and wasn't livable in. We were off grid for the next 25 years. So we, uh, you know, we had a, a one, of the, one of these early wind turbines from um, Holland. We had car batteries. You watch telly off the car batteries, candles, the whole good life uh, thing. Uh, but we would love to go back to that. And, and I think it is, it is possible for farms uh, to to look at and uh, to look at being off grid and hopefully it will become more more and more possible and I think it's even possible for householders to a certain degree now to have you know you have these these solar panels that you can use and move them around it's all happening it just isn't happening quite fast enough is it <laughs> Uh, and yes, I mean, and, and I have to say, you know, you don't just stick st solar panels up and then walk away. You've got to look after the bloody things, clean yeah, them, yeah. service them. You know, so it's, it's, um, it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's there, no picnic. I mean, the, the thing we did recently, which I think is really interesting, was really interesting, is the ground source heat pump. And uh, that I very, I mean, that could be something which is, uh, uh, because it, it can be done with boreholes, which takes up a lot less space. I mean, business parks, you know, industrial. Um, uh, 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 that I think that is something exciting. We also one of our um, one of our farm stays is uh, heated with a with an air source heat pump. That seems pretty. That se seems very good. So, um, but they're a little bit noisier. So anyway, what we're hoping is the technology that the now is going to be the investment, which I think has probably been missing for years and years, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And no, th thank you, Rosie. And, and again, that, that sort of chimes with, with my sense and, and, and awareness of, of these sort of things. And, and the, the other thing you didn't touch on directly was, of course, um, costs and the business case for all these things. And so what is really encouraging is that there's a huge amount of investment uh, worldwide, uh, which is needed, really. And what was unfeasible, I'm thinking principally of, of storage batteries becoming more feasible. Um, there are, of course, then even more complicated things uh, going on around I don't know, the sustainability of lots and lots of lithium batteries around the world. So, so we need it, it's, it's very tricky world. But no, th uh, great to hear that you are making progress. And, and I guess we all have to do what we can. Um, so moving on then, um, we've had a question about um, veganism and somebody um, asking us to 
asks the council to recognise that supporting British local farmers and businesses is far more effective against climate change than going vegan. Now, I wouldn't want to wade into the uh, vegan debate, which is which is very um, very controversial and so forth. I would be very happy, though, absolutely. In in in, and I, as I think again, all, all three of you as businesses uh, would would likewise say that that going local where possible is absolutely the right thing to do. So, yes, we the council are very very keen. On, on supporting local businesses. Um, firstly, obviously, it, it's, it's looking after our, you, you are part of our local community and e ecologically, uh, environmentally, uh, and again, as you referred to quite a bit, Tom, um, keeping reducing travel and, and reducing uh, food miles and the like uh, is, is, is got to be the right thing to focus on. So in, in summary uh, to, and that was from Nat, uh, absolutely we support uh, local farmers and businesses um, and um, that is definitely a good thing. Um, then, moving down the list, we've had a, a question from David Dudman, um, of one of our parish councils, and now uh, Megan from our team is dealing with, De uh, with David uh, on this quite complex uh, question. Uh, David was asking about environmental impacts of contract bids, um, and yes, I, I, I know a tiny bit about that, but again, Megan will be giving a far more comprehensive um, answer to that one. Um, then finally, in the public chat, we've had a question to um, Tom of Faction Refillable. Do you work with village stalls uh, to, to run on a commercial basis? I run Bradfield South End Community Shop and I'm looking to offer them. So a fantastic new business opportunity. Tom, over to you. Well, it's um, strange is the wrong word, but it's interesting that, it, that the, the person is from Bradfield Village Stores um, because one of... Um, my customers, as it, I'm actually a wall and floor tiler by trade. So one of my tiling customers, because um, I still have to tile a bit, uh, used to work in the Bradfield Village stores and was going to approach them about refills, but they didn't take us up on it. So that was a few years ago. But so obviously things have, have changed and no offence meant there at all to Bradfield um, South End stores. Um, we actually had our wedding reception in the hall next door, but I know that's... Um, but yes, we we uh, the worst thing with refills is if you had containers in the shop for people to refill themselves, for want of a better word, is they make a mess. Um, and we have had products um, at the Nature Discovery Centre in Thatcham. And the option we went for in the end was having our pre-filled bottles, which the customers then returned once they were empty and took full ones and then we collected them um cleaned them out and restocked the shelves um but yes there's there are different options and yes we can talk about um um different options with, with anyone but yes we certainly could i would say the, the easiest way might be to have our bottles because then you're just selling them like any other product um as i say if you have people on site refilling um well children and things and um, health, health and safety and floors being wet and things, things like that. I know I make enough mess myself. Um, so it's quite um, easy to do. And we do have several customers within the village and within the area. So um, that may bring them to the shop um, as well. So that might, um, might help both of us. So yes, yeah, we, can, we can talk about that. Yes. Great stuff. So excellent. I'm sure you can continue that conversation uh, offline. Um, so yeah, thank you, everybody. Now I've got uh, I've got one question for each of the three businesses. Uh, maybe a, a, it's one of these uh, terrible uh, elevator pitch questions. Can you tell us this, the the one single thing you want to do and realistically think you can do over the next year to make your business better? I'll give you a few minutes to ponder that deep little question. Um, I don't know if one of you wants to raise your hand when you're ready for it. Um, uh, but uh, no, it'd be really good to hear of one single inch of fantastic. Tom, over to you. For me, um, as, as I touched on there about, about my wall and floor tiling, the refills do not supply us with enough income to, to live on. Basically, I still have to tile one week a month, something like that. So for me, to, to get the refills out there, to get more customers, to get more people on board, to get more people making a difference, um, using less plastic um, and, and cutting their carbon footprint to make it a full-time passion, basically, rather than, you know, sort of um, half and half. It is a passion, but it's, it's not quite where we need it to be. So to grow to that stage would be what we want to do. 
and well me personally anyway yeah no that's that's pretty good tom and, and i wish you all the best with that uh, thank you um so rosie or clementine have you have you come up with your killer answer if not don't worry um uh, maybe you've got too many I'm, things I'm happy to i'm happy to go um for for us i guess it would be um, and it's it's something we started already doing so i guess it's more continuing that but as we've done a lot of work to become a better business ourselves i think we've come to realize that a massive impact is in our supply chain and obviously when you've got 400 suppliers it's a lot of people and a lot of cats to herd and and we see it with the carbon our biggest impact is is in the supply chain so it's working with them and and setting more more rules and I know there's been a question about you know impact assessment on, on bids obviously it's it's a very different thing but uh, at the end of the day it's exactly the same thing I guess it's your procurement is going to matter in those things and the people that yeah you you buy from and we are very lucky that all our suppliers they are you know generally very good businesses and but it's it's about pushing them and, and especially on things like carbon. Some of them are very small and sometimes they see that as a problem, but actually, you know, it's 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 not about the size of your business. It's everybody can can do things. So yeah, that's that's where we are going next, I think. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Clementine, and I wish you all the best with that. Um then finally Rosie, um you you're muted, but you you look as if you're keen to tell us uh, uh, yes, it's not a very glamorous answer. It's very aligns with Clementine, actually, is that, I mean, the, the glamorous things we're doing are things like the new solar roof. Uh, and uh, But uh, it, the reality is the, the real impact is the constant grind of uh, as Clementine is working with her, us, with our supply chain, with our local suppliers. Can we find, we want to find partners, more partners who are local, and are, uh, uh, you know, committed to, uh, you know, uh, working as sustainably as is possible, particularly with regards to waste and uh, use. It. I mean, and this and and uh, th this is uh, um, uh, and that's really it. And it's just keeping going and making sure, reviewing constantly that we are where we're buying our things from. And then it's trying to convert our guests, who are obviously, you know, are our paying customers, in 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 as kind and and as jolly and a non hectoring way as possible, to trying to persuade them that actually they don't need all that stuff to have a really great wedding, a, a, a meaningful funeral, a, 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 a lovely stay. Uh, you know that it's about you know it's about experience rather than stuff, uh, and that's quite that's quite difficult to do in a so it's working on our communication strategy in, in that element. So those two things, they're rather dull, actually. But. No, 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 no you, you're absolutely right, Rosie. It, 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 I'm sure it's a, well, I know, I know it's, it's, it's a long grind, isn't it? So, yes, the main thing about business is it's is hard work for, for everybody. So um, uh, thank you very much, uh, all, all three or four of you, sorry, um, for, uh, for, your, for sharing your, your, your great progress with your business and uh, inspiration I've, I've certainly picked up a, a lot of really fascinating details, which I, I didn't know about uh, all three of your operations. I wish you all the best of, of luck, um, if that's needed, and, and best wishes for the coming year. Again, we will share details, um, and I'm sure there are some people who want to get in touch with you. Um, so once again, good night. Thank you for everybody for listening, and uh, it's been a really interesting session. Thank you all again. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.